the president. It's a national tragedy. Mitt Romney uh, talking about the, the new jobs report, which says businesses created 96,000 jobs in August, well below expectation. Unemployment stayed above 8 percent for the 43rd straight month. This president tried, but he didn't understand what it takes to make our economy work. I do. Romney's five-point plan hinges on exploring America's energy resources, like renewables, natural gas, and oil, which he hopes will be carried by the Keystone XL pipeline. And that will put millions of Americans back to work. Romney also says he'll champion small businesses if elected and train workers for the jobs of tomorrow. Mitt Romney also wants to reduce the debt, a debt he says that students right here at Northwestern College will inherit when they graduate. We are killing the American dream for our children. It's wrong. It will stop if I'm president of the United States. Romney also offered a prediction of sorts for the election, now just 60 days away. If President Obama were reelected, we would have four more years of the last four years, and the American people are going to say no to that. Orange City police say college security counted about 3,000 people who packed today's rally in, on the Northwestern College campus. But the Des Moines Register reports that people were still outside the gym waiting to get in when the fire marshal had to close the doors because the Boltman gym had already reached its capacity, Kristen. Matt, Northwest Iowa has certainly been in the spotlight this past week. It certainly has. We had President Obama come into Sioux City over the Labor Day weekend. He, of course, is back in Iowa tonight speaking in Iowa City at this hour. And, of course, now we had Mitt Romney in Orange City. Chances are it's not the last time we've seen either man appear in Western Iowa. I don't think so. Thanks a lot, Matt. You bet. Romney's motorcade went through Merrill, Iowa on Highway 75 as he made his way back to Sioux Gateway Airport. From there, he flew to New Hampshire. With the promise of hope and change, President Barack Obama won the hearts of most young voters in the last election cycle. In return, they helped hand him the White House. Four years later, GOP presidential candidate Mitt Romney is hoping Obama's young voters will change their minds. KTIV's Forrest Saunders has more. Go back to 2008. CNN reports Obama won 18 to 29-year-olds by 66 percent. Even today, you don't have to search too hard to find young people on the president's side. I'm probably voting for Obama. But 19-year-old Northwestern College student Jolene Wilhelm says Obama is old news on her campus. I think things have changed. Like, I've seen a lot of younger um, students on campus who are very conservative and who, um, obviously not all of them are Republican, but just conservative. Nationally, pollsters at Gallup show Obama still has a 52% approval rating among 18 to 29 year olds. But it's slipping, a dip of 3% in the last week. Romney campaign officials say young voters are fed up with the president. They're looking around today at an unemployment rate for recent college graduates of 50%. Uh, they have record debt, uh, record unemployment. In his campaigning, Obama has been cooling those concerns. A few weeks ago, he reminded a group in Waterloo the economy has no quick fixes. And we knew that restoring the bargain that made this country great would not be easy. It was going to take more than one year or one term or even more than one president, but we knew we had to get started. That's a message wasted on students like Wilhelm who have Mitt on the mind. Oh, I'm going to be voting for Romney. In Orange City, Iowa, Forrest Saunders, TIV News 4. The Obama campaign was quick to react to Romney's speech. Campaign spokesperson Liz Smith said Mitt Romney's plans, which the Republican think will make the country stronger, quote, would do just the opposite. Smith went on to say Romney would give budget-busting cuts to the wealthiest Americans, paid for by raising taxes on the middle class, making deep cuts to education, and turning Medicare into a voucher program. President Obama is also bringing his campaign back to Iowa today. In fact, he's there as we speak. One day after his speech at the Democratic National Convention, Obama is addressing a rally at the University of Iowa, and he brought along First Lady Michelle Obama along with Vice President Joe Biden and his wife, Dr. Jill Biden. Yeah, but any momentum the president gained during the convention could be hurt by new jobs numbers just released for August that show U.S. employers created fewer jobs than expected. Iowa Congressman Steve King and challenger Christy Vilsack clashed in their first debate last night on WH Radio in Des Moines. Vilsack, a Democrat, called herself a homegrown Iowan who wants to go to Washington to be a problem solver, not a partisan fighter. She accused King of caring more about the rich than interests of the middle class, and she also blamed him for not delivering a farm bill in Congress. King, a Republican from Chiron, seeking his sixth term, questioned Vilsack's commitment to the district, noting that the Southeast Iowa 
that have moved to Ames to run for Congress. He also suggested Democratic liberals are empowered by increasing the dependency of Americans on the federal government. And he said the farm bill should soon come to the House floor, but he says Republicans want to reform the food stamp program, which accounts for 80% of the farm bill. The candidates square off in their second debate tomorrow at the Clay County Fair in Spencer. We'll be covering that debate, and then on September September 27th, King and Vilsack will meet again to debate in Orange City. That will be broadcasted live right here on KTIV. We're asking viewers to submit questions for the candidates via email or Facebook. The debate is sponsored by KTIV, Northwestern College, and the Northwest Iowa Review.